All right, this is the lesson you've all been waiting for, the quadratic formula. Now, let's be clear about this. There are simpler ways to solve quadratic equations, and you know them, all right? The easiest way being factoring. If you can take a trinomial and factor it into two binomials, set them equal to zero, that is definitely the way you want to go, all right? However, life doesn't always give us these nice factorable trinomials. You need a fallback position. You need a way that's going to allow you to solve any quadratic equation, or at least be able to tell that there are no real solutions. And that is your new friend, the quadratic formula. Now, I'm going to say this right now, that if you really don't want to go through the math, you can skip part A, all right? I'm going to go ahead and do what's called derive the formula. You saw a little bit of that in the chapel that I did with the white paper and so forth, all right? If you want to follow me through that to get from standard form to solve for x, great. I think it'll be worth your while. But, I mean, if it's really not your thing, I understand. So you could skip part A and go right to part B about how to use this thing called the quadratic formula, because that's the really important part. However, understanding how it is derived is going to give you a pretty solid algebraic background for high school. So this is part A, how we came up with this thing called the quadratic formula. All right. So first of all, we start with standard form quadratics, right? ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. This is the standard form for quadratic equations, all right? You'll notice that it's in descending order and it is set equal to zero, all right? So our task, and this is something that we've never done before because, you know, our task is to solve for x. All right, we want to take this equation and get x all by itself on one side and everything else in simplest form on the other. But that becomes a little tricky when one of the x's is squared and the other one isn't. It's not simply a matter of jumping an x over and dividing both sides by x to get rid of the square because then you got real problems later on. That x just doesn't go away. You wind up with this extra x. So we got to be a little more complicated to solve this thing. In other words, to get it equal to x and everything else on the other side. So, follow me on this, all right? A lot of this is going to look really familiar. You've got all the tools you need to be able to do this. We're just going to put them all together in a way that you haven't done before. So here we go, all right? We start off with the quadratic formula in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. All right. The first thing we're going to do is isolate the x squared. And right now the x squared is being multiplied by a. So we're going to divide each term by a. All right. I'm going to divide everything by a. And when I do that, ax squared over a, the a's cancel out. The a goes away. And I'm left with just an x squared. All right. But that gives me, I have to divide bx by a, and I do, and I have to divide c by a, and I divide 0 by a, and that still gives me 0. That's one of the good things about always setting it equal to 0, right? All right. So now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the x's on one side, and I'm going to get what's not x on the other. In other words, I'm going to subtract this c over a from both sides. So I'm basically going to jump to plus c a over to the other side, and now I'm left with x squared plus bx over a equals minus c over a. You're with me so far. So far we haven't really done anything different, right? However, this should look vaguely familiar to those of you that remember about completing the square. Because that's the next step. We've got this. This is where we were, all right? x squared plus bx over a equals c minus ca. So now we're going to complete the square. We're going to make this binomial into a perfect square trinomial. And you may recall that to complete the square, you take whatever is being multiplied times x, b, divide it by 2, and square that, all right? 
So in this case, what's being multiplied times x is b over a. And so I've got this b over a, and that's going to be divided by 2, and I'm going to square it. So to complete the square, what I wind up with, all right, is b over 2a squared. And I'm going to add that term to both sides to complete the square. b over 2a squared added here, and b over 2a squared added there. Okay. That's completing the square. It's probably the most difficult part of this whole thing. Because now I've got x squared plus bx over a plus b over 2a squared. I have created a perfect square trinomial on this side. And on this side, I've got just the minus c over a, which I had before from jumping that over. And what I added to complete the square on this side, I have to add to complete the square over on that side. All right. And so now that I've got this perfect square trinomial, trinomial, this gives me a really good break. Because the tricky part of this whole thing is how are we going to get rid of the x squared? So watch. That perfect square trinomial becomes a perfect square binomial. Square root of this plus the square root of the last term. And if we were to FOIL this, x plus b over 2a times x plus b over 2a, we would get exactly what we started with here. All right? In other words, the square root of this and the square root of that in a binomial, which is the whole point of completing the square, right? So I've got this binomial now squared, and notice that it's x to the first power right now. And over here, I haven't done anything different, all right? Now over here, this is kind of awkward. I've got two rational expressions. So I need a common denominator to add them together. And I see what's common to both is an a, all right? And I've got to have a common thing for all of it. Just a isn't going to help me with the 4, and it's not going to help me with the other thing. So my common denominator is 4a squared, because a goes into 4a squared, and 4a squared goes into 4a squared. And so I rewrite this fraction with the common denominator. And to do that, then I play what's changed. There used to be just an a there. Now there's a 4 and an a added to it. So this is minus 4, I have this minus c over a written with the common denominator becomes minus 4ac, because if I cancel things out, I wind right back up where I started. I haven't really changed it. And then this already was the common denominator. So now I can rewrite this whole thing over the common denominator here, and just kind of change things around. It's minus 4ab, so I'll put the positive first, b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. And that's going to be equal to our binomial there, squared. So take a look at that. So what we did on this side was change this by creating a common denominator for both fractions, changing the numerator to make equivalent fractions, all right, and then simply putting the whole thing over the common denominator and starting with the positive thing instead of the negative thing. All right. So you've got to be thinking, OK, What's going to happen next? Well, I've got this squared term. I don't want a squared term. How do you get rid of squared terms? You unsquare them. And so I'm going to take this square term, and I'm going to square root it. I'm going to find the square root of a squared term, which, as we all know, is just what's inside the term, the square root sign. So that x plus b over 2a squared the square root is just x plus b over 2a, all right? But since I did the square root of that side, I have to take the square root of the other side as well. And remember, taking a square root results in having an answer that could be positive or negative. So I can't just say it's the square root of that. It's plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a over 4a squared, all right? Now, as it turns out with radicals, if I have a fraction inside a radical sign, that's the same as a radical numerator over the radical denominator. And guess what? The radical denominator just happens to be a perfect square. 
so that that 4a squared becomes the square root of 4a squared, which is just 2a. So now, I've got this binomial, which I got by using the square root, is equal to plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. x is almost by itself here. So all I have to do is subtract b over 2a from both sides, which gets rid of it on this side, leaving x all by itself, and minus b over 2a plus or minus this thing. And look, they're both a. They have a common denominator. So now I can write this more simply as the whole thing over the common denominator minus b plus or minus b squared, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all of that is over 2a. And we are done. We have solved for x. We have got x all by itself and all the a's, b's, and c's on the other side. And this is what you call the quadratic formula. And this formula will solve any standard form quadratic for x, <coughs> as you will see in part b.